What's up everyone? April here. I'm back at you with another video after a short little break where I was busy preparing a LinkedIn learning course. I did a course on the PL900 exam, the Power Platform Fundamentals. So that's all done and recorded and hopefully should be released sometime early next year. I'll definitely keep you updated. For this video, I wanted to go back to the basics and help out a friend that requested I make this video to show how you can pre-populate a manager field in your Power Apps applications. So I'll walk you through how we can pull in the information for a current logged in user's manager and how we can pre-populate a form to show that information and do all that without resulting in any errors. So I'll show you how it's done right after this. Pre-populating fields is a common requirement in applications. So take this expense application, for example, we open it up and we have certain fields like a date, who submitted it, and the person's manager. That's all information that we probably don't have to make our users fill out. We can default with the current date, with the current logged in users information for submitted by, and with the current logged in users manager in this manager field. As I mentioned, I've created a video already on pre-populating things like the current login user for submitted by and the date, but we're going to be focusing on this manager section because it's a little bit more complicated than some of the other things that we might pre-populate just because we have to use a connector. But this is an example of how we would use it in an application to pre-populate these different fields. So just to prove that it works, we can submit a new item here. So I might've got a laptop and we'll submit that. And the back end of this is actually a SharePoint list. So if I give a refresh here on our list, we'll see that that information gets carried over with that manager field populated inside the SharePoint list here in our manager field, which is a person or group field. So that's what we'll be focusing on showing you how to do, how we can default this person or group field type to get the current logged in users manager. Now, the first step to getting this work is we need to leverage the Office 365 users connector. So to do that, we'll go over to our data tab here on the left-hand side. We'll go to add data and search for Office 365 users. Now I've already added that in here, which is why it's not showing, but the connector itself looks like this. It has the Office logo, and then it says Office 365 users. So now that I have that inside of my application here, we can leverage one of its actions that this has to be able to pull manager information. For my use case, when the screen is first loaded, I wanna be able to get the current logged in user and then return their manager. So where I'll put this logic to get the manager is on this screen's on visible property. Now, depending on how you're gonna use this, if you want to leverage that manager information in other screens, for example, you might do this on the on start. So on the app, we have a property called on start. So it's a possibility you might do this logic there as well. But we do wanna limit the amount of things that we're doing here on the on start, just because there can be some performance implications. Now I only need this data on this screen where I'm submitting a new item, so I'm gonna do it here. So on the unvisible property, if we look at the formula bar, this is really all we need to do to be able to get the manager. Now, first thing I'm going to be doing is storing it in a variable. I'm using what's called a global variable with the set command, just in case I do want to use it in other screens. If I didn't, however, and only wanted to use it on this particular screen, we can use the update context variable. So I'm creating a variable to store the manager information called VAR var manager. And I'm going to call our Office 365 users connector. We'll do a dot and we'll call the manager v2 action. Now the manager v2 action really only requires one input and that is the user principal name or ID of the person's manager that you wanna look up. So I'm using the shortcut user function that automatically gets us the current logged in users information to be able to show that. And I'm pointing this to the email property of the current logged in user. Now, if I did want to reuse the current logged in users information in multiple spots, I would probably do this slightly differently and I would leverage the app on start and put this information in a variable. So I could use set and create a variable called var user and then point it to that user property and reference that in multiple spots. So it only has to make that call one time. For the sake of showing you how this works though, let's go with what I have here. Now I could just call this function and leave it at that. But the reason I'm not doing that is because this will open us up to potential errors. Because if for whatever reason, the person using the application doesn't have a manager filled in their Active Directory profile, this will have a nasty red error in their user experience. 
So just to give you an idea where this information is coming from in everyone's profile, we have a property that we can define here for manager. So if this isn't filled out and we're using that Office 365 users dot manager v2 action, then it will result in an error unless we do what I'm doing here. So this is the key to making this work without nasty errors. We're simply going to inside of our variable here, use the if error function, which allows us to trap these errors. So I can say if error open parenthesis, then use that same officer 65 users dot manager action that I have. So I'm saying if there is an error with this action, set this variable to blank. Otherwise, set it to whatever that manager is. That means there is a value here. There was no error, no problem returning that information. So we should be able to set this variable to the manager. Now that I have that piece, we can simply bind this into our manager field. Now for this, I'm using a form control, but the same theory here would apply to if you're using independent fields and using a patch statement. So you would simply go to your dropdown here and of course, if you are using a form control, make sure you've unlocked this card so that you can make changes like this. And we're going to go to the default selected items property of your dropdown for this person or group field. In the formula bar, you see I have some more power FX, some more formulas here that I'm using. Now this one is optional depending on what you're doing with your form or if you're using a form at all, but I'm simply doing a check here to see what the mode of the form is because we can have multiple modes like if this is submitting a new item or editing an existing item. So if it's a new item, this is when I want to default that manager information. If it's not a new item, then I want to get whatever was previously submitted in that record. So if it is a new item here, I'm going to fill in that manager information. So what I have to do is an open and a close squiggly bracket. And since this is a person or group field, I need to pass it two key pieces of information. It needs the display name of the person and it needs the claims, which is basically their email is all that means. So we're going to put a display name colon and we're going to pull in our variable, our var manager dot display name. And then we're going to do comma claims colon. And then we'll put all of this logic here, which I'll put this in the description. So you can just copy and paste that. And then we'll pull in that var manager dot mail. So that will properly default this to the current logged in users manager. Now, often when I'm testing this, just to make sure things are working okay, when I'm pre-populating dropdowns like this, I'll throw in a label, which is what I did here, and just have that surface up my variable information. So I can just make sure that's even getting pulled in correctly. So then I can troubleshoot if it's a problem with the variable itself or a problem with how I'm trying to default a value. That's really all there is to it. Now you'll notice in the editor experience here, I do have this error that's popping up. So if I click on the error, it's letting me know that there was an error with that action. So that's because the account I'm logged in here, my account, if we look at the user details, doesn't have a manager. So in the editor experience, you will see this error pop up if that's the case. However, the end user won't see that. So if I were to publish this application, and open Power Apps like I'm going to be using it rather than editing it. So I'll open our expense app here. We'll see it open just fine. I didn't get any error, just that manager field is blank. So I'd have to manually go search for someone and type them in as my manager. Now, alternatively, we could also put a message up to the user, letting them know that we couldn't locate a manager just so that they know it's actually working, but you didn't have a manager in your profile. So quickly, I can show you how we might do that. So in this screen one on visible where I was getting the manager information in our if error, we could switch up this logic here a bit. So I'm actually going to just comment some of this out and we'll copy this if error. So we're still going to check if there is an error, but if there is, we can use the built in notify function which will pop open a message bar at the top to show the user a custom message. So you can type anything you want in here, like manager cannot be located, and then just close that out and that will prompt that notification. And then we can say if it's not an error, then we can just switch this up slightly. Then we can set our variable bar manager to that officer 65 users dot manager v2. So same thing, just switching it up so that we can put an error message up to the user rather than just showing a blank value. So that's really all there is to it for pre-populating the current logged in users manager here. Now we can use this same action though for populating other people's managers. So for example, 
If I had a drop down here and I wasn't pre-populating that with a current logged in user like, and I wanted to look up whatever the manager is for who's chosen in this drop down, we could do that also. We could simply reference this drop down value, which is data card value six. And in our default items property of our manager lookup, we could call that office 365 users dot manager v2 action directly here. So again, we would want to wrap it in an if error if we're not using a variable. So we could call manager and we will get that data card value six dot selected dot email. So we're saying if that is an error, then we'll leave this as blank. Otherwise, we will call this same action. So I'm gonna copy that whole block here, except we wanna get the display name. So we'll do a dot after this and get that display name. And finally, for the claims, we'll do the exact same thing. So I'm pretty much gonna copy this whole formula here. And the only thing that we'll change here is instead of display name, we'll get the mail field. And so now to test this out, I'm logged in as myself, who I don't have a manager, but if I were to change the submitted by to Morgan, who we know does, it looks up her manager correctly. So multiple ways that we can leverage this to pull in manager data error free. And we can even get really creative and tie this into Power Automate. So if it determines that there is an error there, we could go fire off a Power Automate workflow and send an email to one of our admins to let them know that this person is missing a manager and that needs to be added to their profile. So definitely a lot we can do here with this. All right, well, that's all that I have for you today. Now I'm always taking requests for new videos, just like I did with this one. This is requested by Matt, happy to oblige and make a quick video on this topic here. If you have any ideas like this for things that would be helpful for me to make videos on, drop a note in my comments here and let me know. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.